Hey, Lindsay, get off your phone. No, I have to text YMCA. Okay. Are you ready to get some dirt? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I've been I've been dying to say that for a while. I usually end up with some mud on my face anyway, so <laughs> it's fine. You big disgrace. Kicking my patootie all over the place. No, I don't, I don't know. I digress. Everybody, so. yes. So, in this episode of the RV Small Talk podcast, we're going to talk to Sarah Smith, the visionary who came up with the idea of the app and the website called The, the Dirt. Dirt, spelled D Y R T. The Dirt. Now, if you haven't heard of The Dirt, it's a really cool app and website where you basically just find campgrounds you find reviews for campgrounds pictures of campgrounds videos really just trying to streamline the process of trying to find a campground these days because it's tricky campgrounds on it and now you can book campgrounds on it oh my gosh it's a one-stop shop y'all we had a fantastic interview so here in a minute we're going to jump in but welcome to the rv small talk podcast where we talk about lightweight trailers truck campers and people places and adventures that go right along with them we are your hosts from princess craft rv i'm clint I'm Lindsay, and PJ's not here, but... But we're not going to drag her name in the mud. <laughs> the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we miss you, PJ. It was so much, and we need someone to be the adult here. <laughs> I digress. If you, want the, um, if you want the show notes for this episode of the RV Small Talk podcast, head on over to rvsmalltalk.com. And don't forget that we have an online community on Facebook. That is the RV Small Talk community. You can check out our videos and whatnot on our channel on YouTube. Just look up RV Small Talk podcast and boop, there we are. Yes, I said boop. And that's the sound that you should make when you click enter. Boop. So... <laughs> I digress. Let's jump into this episode with this interview with Sarah Smith from The Dirt. You ready? Ready. All right, everybody. I would like to take a quick moment to welcome to the podcast, Sarah Smith from The Dirt. So welcome aboard, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, no problem. So I've actually stumbled across your the website and the app a few times in the past. Uh, I would say the past two years, I keep on coming across it whenever I am doing the research for my little family outings. I got a wife and two young kids. And um, and so it's one of those things where I come across it and and it's always been neat. But I, whenever y'all reached out and said, hey, y'all should know more about the dirt and you should talk to Sarah. It was, a, it was a, absolutely an opportunity. So Did you do the deep dive. Yeah. I, I, I want, I want to know the dirt on the dirt. So, so I finally. bet you get that all the time. Well, I, I, not as much as I wish I did. Cause I'm going to have people understand why I named it the dirt. <laughs> that's, that's one of my questions. All right. How about we start there then? Yeah. Why the dirt and why the dirt with the spelling of the dirt? Well, the spelling thing was easy just because it's the only way I could find it. It didn't, I couldn't buy the URL with the regular spelling. So it had to okay. be with the weird, That's the Y smart. spelling. Fair. Yeah. And the dirt, because, you know, I thought a lot about names and some of them had the word camp in there, but I didn't really want the word camp because I wanted it to be a, a bigger brand than just something that implies camping, even though that's what we're all about. Um, and I love the dirt because really what, what the dirt is, is a, it's a place to get the scoop, get the skinny, get the dirt, I, I on like it. where to go camping. <laughs> um, and you usually get kind of dirty when you're camping. So it, it works both ways. <laughs> Hopefully, if you're doing it right. Uh, <laughs> so the dirt is basically a app where you can go find places to camp. I mean, that's a very... It's so much more than that, uh, but that's kind of the basis of it for those who do not know. It's the number one, isn't it? The, I don't. I think it's the number one. The number one app camp spot finding app. On both Apple and Android, I believe. <laughs> is that not yes. an accurate description? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's yeah. not even that old. of there are, there are much older apps out there. So you've gained ground pretty quickly. Uh, when, when exactly was the app first launched? I know I read in the background on your website that you kind of had the idea in 2013. But when did you mm -hmm. go, go live on the App Store? Um, 
The app, I think it was around 2016, the original app that has since been completely rebuilt because I think back then we only, we had like a really small team, maybe one or two people working on that whole app. Um, so we we kind of redid it to make it even better to what the app is today. But yeah, um, yeah the idea was back in 2013 and I built a very basic WordPress site of really simple technology that I as a non-technical person could handle um, just to kind of see our other people. And the way I would describe it is back then for sure is like the Yelp for camping. You know, I, yeah, I'm I frustrated that. that I can't find a campground because I can't see what other people thought of it. I can't see their photos. And that's originally why we started the dirt um, early on. But I built a very, you know, basic beta site before we got a lot of um, money invested in it. So I could kind of make sure other people felt this pain point as well. So what 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 were you using in 2013 and that was just not getting you yeah, there? Why was it what frustrating? other technologies and search tools yeah. were you using? Yeah. You know, there are some government sites out there where you can find a directory of campgrounds mm -hmm. that that entity runs and they're they're fine but there, it's just a directory. It's, I, I wanted something that wasn't a directory that didn't just say, here's where it's located, go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the information that was more than just a flat one dimensional map with a right. pin on it. I wanted to see pictures. I wanted to know what did Lindsay think of this campground? I heard she was there mm -hmm. last week. Did she like it? What are her pictures like? I loved um, it, by the way. So, the pictures yeah, are not good. I thought you might. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so, yeah, just looking for that content. You, uh, it, again, going back to what I read on your website in 2013, you were, you're kind of dreaming the, the initial bit of this up. And what was your, what were kind of the bullet points of, of this on your, on your notepad or whatever? Uh, your, your initial bullet points of, you know what? It would be better if I if this had this, this and this. Yeah. So early on, it would be better. It would the best thing that could happen is people could submit photos. Mm -hmm. They could submit reviews and they could submit videos and they could give other tips. And that was really, really tricky because it sounds so basic, mm -hmm. um, you know, not very complicated, but really people people don't do that many reviews. You know, it's hard to get people to spend the time to give that sort of content. Right. Um, in at the dirt, we, we really pay attention to something called the one nine ninety rule of community development. And that okay. says that 1% of people in an online community will be very active and do the reviews um, and give you that content like on Yelp. 9% will like it or share it or upvote it, but 90% of people do nothing but consume it, right, you know, right. look at it, read it. So early on, we just focus on how do we get these one percenters really engaged and active on our site so that we can build the content up to make this different from the ones that were making me so frustrated. Yeah, yeah. And you found a solution and it's a, and it's a word that I love to toss in as many times as I can. You found a way to gamify this experience. To I yes. thought your word was scrum diddlyumptious. No, I think it's precipitation. But oh. today is gamify. Okay, gamify. <laughs> so, so where did that come from? And then can you kind of walk us through what the user experience is as a gamified app? Yeah, that's that's great, and I love that word too. I, I haven't been saying it nearly enough lately. Um, but you, you should know, use that word precipitously. We, <laughs> I I don't even think I can say that word. <laughs> don't try. <laughs> um, so just trying to figure out how do we engage that 1%? How, how do they mm -hmm. come to a, a site that they've never even heard of, have no connection to? How do we, how do we incentivize them to be interested in this? Um, besides the fact that we are solving a problem that a lot of campers, every camper I've ever spoken to agrees needed to be solved. Um, but more than that, so what we did is we divided the country into regions. Um, mm -hmm. Usually it's about 30 different regions where some of the smaller states are bundled together. Um, and if you do a review in, I don't know, Oregon, because that's where I am, um, you do a re review in Oregon of a campground and you will get points for, you know, three points for the review, 
four points for the photo, 10 points for the video. Um, and then each region has a leaderboard. So you can watch yourself kind of going up and down this leaderboard and competing with other people in the community, other campers. And it gets really heated towards the end of the month. Um, and at the end of the month, we we judge the contest to see who was the best reviewer in that region um, so that you can't just win just for having a ton of points. You actually have to give okay. good content. Okay. Um, and then we, we clear the leaderboards and the next month we start again. Um, and the, the winners will win uh, the great, you know, reward of being, uh, getting a, a winner's badge for that, but they also, we work with outdoor brands and they will get a, usually it's about a hundred dollar gift card from an outdoor brand. And it, just a few high notes on who these brands are that you work with. Cause I have a few that I, I kind of looked off and I was like, mm -hmm. I, well, I'm interested in this. What are some of the big ones? And then I guess a follow-up question, how did that, how did you start bringing people on and or businesses on to get behind this effort? So, so who's, Who's, who are you working with and how did this whole start off getting connected? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, at different times of the year, we've worked with different brands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, last year for quite for the entire year, we worked with Eddie Bauer, um, which is one of the best known brands we've worked with. We've worked with um, I'm wearing them right a lot now. of different. <laughs> are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> um yeah, just a lot of different outdoor brands. I can't even, Yeti, um, mm -hmm. I can't even think of them all, honestly, but sure. a lot of different outdoor brands over the, the course of the probably eight years that we've been running these contests. And um, it's it's really fun to, to be able to, you know, work with these brands who are, have the same goal that we have to help get more people, you know, outside. Yeah, absolutely. So... You, you said that, that there's been some changes since since launch and all that. What will someone find if they're they're just hearing about this app? What are they going to find once they download it, open it up and, and do the initial, you know, put your name in and all that? What's kind of the user experience for the newbie on the app? Yeah. So besides the reviews, um, mm -hmm. which is really our meat and potatoes and what we've been building up for years you know we had up until last year we had collected two million photos videos reviews and tips mm -hmm. of campgrounds and then in the past year we doubled that uh, so up to four million so we really reached kind of a point of exponential growth last year um so besides the reviews and that community content feeling um you We'll also see bookable properties on the dirt. So you can book campgrounds or RV resorts directly on the dirt now. This is a relatively newer thing for us and it's a big, big part of what we're focusing yeah. on this year. Um, we don't charge any commission to campgrounds so they can come on the dirt, list their property, claim okay. their property kind of like they would on Yelp um, mm -hmm. and then turn on bookings if they want. So they're getting in front of the 30 million uh, visits coming to our site each year in, you know, campers are seeing their properties as well. So bookings. And then the last thing is the dirt pro. The dirt pro is something we launched a couple of years ago, actually right at the beginning of 2020. Um, and it's an upgraded premium version of, of the dirt, which gives you beyond all the free stuff I've already mentioned. It can give you some other special tools like a trip planner tool, um, offline capabilities. So if you know you're going to be up in the mountains and losing mm -hmm. cell service, you can still have the information. Um, BLM land and national forest land just map overlays. So if you're doing dispersed camping, you can kind of figure out where you need to go. And so that's really been a big focus of what we've been doing for the past two, two three years however long it's been since 2020 started. Right. right. <laughs> that trip planner looks uh Perfect. I, did, <laughs> right. I didn't even know that was a thing. I've just played on the the free side of dirt and um, I saw that in the packet today and I, I want to try that. I mean, so you put yeah. in your beginning point and your end point and the dirt will map out your journey, mm -hmm. suggest campgrounds yeah, along it, the way. 
Yeah. And you can indicate certain things like I want to drive four hours a day and I, I'm hauling this and my vehicle's this big um, or I only want to stay in RV parks or I only, you know, you can tailor it to what you are looking for, um, which is really handy. And, and my co-founder and husband, Kevin, um, he and I just spent six months on the road in our van. Our We have a Winnebago Revel and um, traveled the U.S. and used our trip planner feature and all the other features. And it was really, really fun to be out there in the world using it again. Using after it? A long time. Yeah. Behind the computer. Yeah. So you- you're currently van lifers. Did I catch that? Not van lifers. Not now. Lifers. Now Not we're now. back. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I would your never part timers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does we your van have, have a we name? We have a van. The Dirt Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would call if I were involved with the dirt. My my van would be called the Nitty Gritty. <laughs> the nitty gritty dirt van. I like yeah. it. <laughs> oh. I like it. Your next oh, van. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We won't tell anybody. You can take it. Absolutely. Oh. I'd love I to love see it. that out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So you have a goal stated as your mission statement. And I'm going to flip to it because I have it. Oh, circled yeah. We want to know. I thought it was the first page, Clint. Yeah, but I mixed up my it's pages. It's right here. All right. That's the problem. Mission oh. statement We <laughs> want to grow the U.S. camping market from 80 million to over 100 million campers by empowering an inclusive camping for all community. When did you write that? Yeah. I was going to say, do you know who said that? <laughs> Sarah <laughs> Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we've we've we worked on honing that in the past year, um, but we've the, we've always had kind of similar mission statements. But what's really interesting about that is we just did a survey, a camping survey, and and you guys probably know this just as well as anyone else would. Um, you know how explosive camping has been right. in the past couple of years, and we we saw oh, what was it. 8 million new campers went camping last year for the first time. First time right. campers. 8 million. Um, first the, time. Oh, wow. Yeah. First time campers. And of that, 40% were from diverse communities who haven't typically been represented as much in camping. So it's really also exciting. Huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to be a tool that can help people who who haven't camped before and maybe don't right. know. You know, I grew up camping. I was, went camping in the northern woods of Minnesota starting at age five. So 100 percent jealous. Been something I did. One hundred percent jealous. It's hot in the summertime here in Texas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's actually why one of the reasons why the dirt is so amazing is because it makes it so accessible to people who have never been camping, who didn't grow up camping, but, the, but they're the technology really, savvy and right. apps are a way of life at this point. I don't really know where to start, but maybe, but like, you know, when things are too daunting, people just don't right. do it, but you go into the dirt and it just does it all for you. So then you're literally pushing people out there to go camping. That's mm-hmm. so where, how close Thank are you, you to that? A uh, hundred million. Where are you at? In oh, this well, goal? we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, I think I think the last uh, numbers were closer to 80 million Americans are camping. So we, we, we get we still have yeah. work to do as an as an industry, but we'll we'll get more people out there. Can I ask how the experience of the past two years because of the covid pandemic and all that, how has that looked from your side at the dirt? Um, was that hard to manage? As I mean, as someone who serves up information and and d- is developing an online community, what was that like? Yeah, well, we you know when the pandemic hit and that first year camping became such a thing to do, and it just right. grew so much more, and it just happened to coincide with the launch of the Dirt Pro, the tools mm-hmm. I mentioned. Um, so for us, it was really interesting to see this this like kind of explosion happen and we're like wow Mm -hmm. someone's buying the dirt pro like every three minutes and this is Mm, so exciting i mean the pandemic was not exciting but that aspect was was kind of exciting (laughs) 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 don't do that again (laughs) yeah totally so Um, so 
Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, well, it's just, you know, it was interesting to wonder if that was just some sort of a blip or if, if, and if things would come back down and we've just seen growth in the, in the camping community, you know, each year. And I, I think as you guys know, there can be some big investments made in camping. It's not, Absolutely. it's not like hiking where you just need a pair of hiking boots and off you go. Like yeah. e- even if you're only a tent camper, you need a tent, you need equipment, you need, you know, mattresses. And then you yeah. go up from there. Right. right. And, and you um, might even you- need training. If you really, really come from a, a family and a community that does not camp, it can be daunting, scary even. And there's places out there where you can get, training on how to do basic tent camping so yeah I mean, really that's there's awesome. tent camping classes yeah rei offers that Ask they like Hano. teach you how to that's great. pitch a tent texas and parks and wildlife offers that a tent camping class yeah they do <laughs> that is i mean that's wonderful i just i never knew that was a thing uh, you're about to be signed up that is great it. i don't need to know how to tent <laughs> camp i have a trailer <laughs> yeah i'm sure you guys are all decked out <laughs> uh, we, we we have we have certain perks here at work. <laughs> yeah. So yes, looking sure. at the Dirt Pro, so so I'm understanding this right on the Dirt, the regular, not Pro version on on the normal soil. Um, the no- <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find campgrounds, state parks, mm-hmm. private campgrounds, Army. KOAs, yeah. things like that. But to find yep. that off grid BLM in the middle of nowhere boonies kind of place, you would need Dirt Pro. Well, to find the the maps that will show you if you're in those where areas, you are, you need the yeah. Dirt Pro. Yeah. Okay. Um, if someone has, um, and we have campers who add campgrounds. To to the dirt every day. We have a customer support team who will verify that it's accurate information. And many campers have added dispersed sites. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. So that, that if there's an actual pin of a location, that's a dispersed, probably, you know, more known dispersed site. um, You can find that on the dirt without needing those map layers. And are you finding that the private property owners are adding their, their, I don't know, ranches and all that as, as well? Yeah. Yes. It's just been so interesting to see all these new private landowners who are, you know, renting out a plot of land behind their house or a plat- tent platform. Um, we have those people coming to our, our platform every single day and adding their, their listing onto the dirt and then um, making sure that the camping community is seeing what they have to offer. Sure. Sure. All right. From from obviously being an app on on the App Store and Android, uh, Google Play Store and all that, you get fed a lot of data every month, week over week, month over month on who's downloading, how they're using your app and all that. What kind of trends are you seeing in the camping community Um, like demographics or types of camping people are trending towards uh, or even types of destinations that are kind of like, wow, that's that's the big the big one. It's popular now. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of that was in the, um, the report that we just did, which I'll have to, I'll send you a link to, cause it was really interesting, but we discovered that RV camping is the fastest growing type of camping, which oh, we believe it. You <laughs> yeah. We're exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And the number of people, the other trend we've seen and the number of people who have tried a different sort of camping, and mm-hmm. I could even use myself as an example. We were tent campers for years. Then we um, got a, a taxa cricket, which uh, really we sell taxa. Cr- you had a cricket. I know. We, we and were the I first dealership who ever had them. Yeah, you really? saw PJ's walk through. Yes, loved it. yes, yeah. That's what helped me buy it. So tell yes. her thank you. Oh my gosh, how cool! <laughs> I love it. Yay, well, we, we yeah. love taxa products. They're so different and uh, yeah. let you go out there without too much, I don't get, like staying they, in nature. They just work. It's it's a mobile outdoor habitat. It's a mobile outdoor habitat. <laughs> yeah. And the, the one problem I have with taxa products 
and it's not it's not a real problem but it's kind of a problem is you want to be left alone you want to be out there but if someone sees it they're going to come talk to you about it yeah did you have that problem <laughs> oh, yeah. like every gas station you stop at people are like i want to see inside yes. of us <laughs> yes yeah yeah i lot and there people are like what is that is that like a spaceship you're telling yes like, no, it's, it's it, it is a spaceship <laughs> it, it, it has spaceship dna yes. no really yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. that is so the cool whole story of how it was based off of nasa habitat so yeah yeah, yeah. so from but the cricket we, what did I, you I loved it I, I love the cricket and the only reason we got rid of it is because we wanted a van for this road trip that would be right. self-contained and took not that the cricket is hard to set up but just took no effort to set up right, right. Um, so now we have a van which has a big the dirt sticker on the side of it so we still get stopped at the gas stations yeah. like what is this what's That's the right. day <laughs> well yeah. the next van again the nitty gritty dirt van just i i can't believe the- we didn't think of that That's and then so just good. real little in the bottom just put like thanks Lindsay. Like- <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be under the bumper <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, it. what do you guys well, what do you camp in i camp in an intex soul horizon it's it's a pretty one it's got like a big front windshield which was really the selling feature for me um oh, i mean they're I amazing that. amazing trailers uh we sell them here and for the past few years clint and i have both been looking at them they have like a i don't i don't even know how to call it they have like a toy hauler line and then like trailer line and one of them is definitely more masculine and one of them is definitely more feminine so clint has it's a toy hauler, but really it's an empty box with beds that fold out the side. And a full kitchen inside. A kitchen inside. Yeah. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just the coolest thing. I um, just used it this past weekend. I went I went out and tried my new off-road motorcycle. Trust me, I don't know what I'm doing and I should not have gone where I went. <laughs> but, but you did it. I took my family and they and they waved goodbye hoping I would return and I did. Yay. <laughs> and then yeah, That's so a we take uh we take our trailers everywhere and man i could talk about intech forever but anyways oh, i I'm, I'm excited about this uh this trip planner thing it makes me want to plan a trip now because yeah. it just yeah. doesn't seem so daunting if i can just no. put in beginning and end and then just kind of play and see yeah you know yeah. can you tell me more about this community it. Yeah, this community that's developed around your, you know, the app and the functionality. Um, Let's say someone's brand new and they're getting the reviews or choosing their pathway and all that. But is there more uh, more to the community than that that you're finding where people are actually meeting or or helping people with problems and solve issues and, and really go in depth on helping each other? Yeah, that's a great question. And one thing we've added to our site, our website, our forums. Um, so you can go on there and there's different categories. So if you're an RVer, there's a special forum for that. If you're a tent camper or a backpacker, there's, so there's different forums based on um, what kind of camper you are or region as well. And it's really, really great to see our community and they're helping each other. You know, someone's like, I just got this. I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. help and people are so willing to help people figure out what they're doing if they don't know it's it's been really great to see that that feature um kind of blossom and then we do you know we have our our dirt users our super users we call them rangers or legends that's just kind of Mm -hmm. their their name once they get a a badge that calls them a ranger or or legend rangers or legends (laughs) nice And they'll meet up uh, without us being involved. Like Rangers that didn't know each other will meet up in Colorado and meet each other. And it's really fun to see that that community happening. And for me and Kevin, we were going to different shows this past summer when we were in the dirt mobile and we'd set up, we'd have booths, you know, representing the dirt. And it was so fun to see people from like 50 yards away yell the dirt and they'd come running over to us. We actually, we were in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, driving down the highway and some guy pulls up besides us as we're driving. He, he's like, roll down your window. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? Right, and yeah. uh, it said the dirt on the van. And he's oh, like, are yeah. you the dirt? 
like, yeah. We are the dirt. <laughs> You're like, and how do like, I answer oh, this? I love you guys. <laughs> oh, that is yeah, so that cool. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, so I have a crazy. question. Those those who are, are traveling, it's, I mean, GPS has been around for a while. Are, are there any integrations now or maybe coming for people who use the dirt to go, OK, I, I'm planning my trip in the dirt and I can integrate with, say, a Garmin product or anything, anything like that? I I think you can. I'm not don't quote me on this because I'm not exactly sure, but I think you can like take the information and put it in there, but it, don't quote me on that. Cause I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, mm-hmm. but it's definitely something if we don't already have something like that, um, that we would, we've heard from people that they'd be interested in for the future. Um, yes. and we're always working hard to listen to our users, listen to our community and figure out like what we're missing that mm-hmm. we can add. Um, we actually, we just raised, $11 million at the end of last year. So wow. we've doubled our team size in the past six months. And that's very daunting. Um, yes. but it's just, <laughs> yes. gosh, think of all the things we can build. Um, so it, it's really exciting to know that we can build even more things. That's super exciting. You need you need like project managers. <laughs> yeah. What's the future yeah. of the dirt? What are you working on now? What's the new the next big thing for the dirt? Yeah. Well, definitely this this bookings the the bookings. So you can come to the dirt now. You can see bookable properties. Um, if we want to be the go to resource for camping, that has to include not only finding where you're going to go camping and reviewing where you're going to go camping, but booking the camping. You can do it um, all in so one place, <laughs> all in one spot, the go to resource. Yeah. Um, so that's really a big focus right now, because in historically, we've been known as a rating and review site. And so kind of making right. that shift to also a bookings site is really sure. important to us. Sure. Um, I like it because it's got it's got know, the best of Yelp. It's got the best of TripAdvisor. And yet it's the category I much prefer, which is the outdoors and camping. Camping, yeah. So and, and this gamified so I can say the word and play the game. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to get in there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Buy in. Ugh, love it. Yeah. Get, get into the Texas leaderboard and get up there at the top. Ooh, I wonder oh, how big the Texas. I, I was about to say, is. I bet that's a big old leaderboard of people who are so how do you stop people from just I know you said it's not just about the number of reviews but how do you make sure that people aren't just going in there and typing the system. this place was great this place was terrible just to get up there yeah and we do have people who do that um, sometimes and we oh, just humans we, are fun first of all <laughs> what Oh, I said, oh, humans yeah. are fun. <laughs> I know humans are fun. Um, we have a flagging system. So our camp users will flag things all the time. And we have a, a customer support team who reviews things that come through like that. Mm-hmm. We also spend a lot of time at the end of the month judging the contests. We okay. literally physically judge them to make sure that you didn't just say, this is great. Here's 50 pictures of a tree and right. call it good like that's not so we have a whole thing about I the bet that that's a fun meet a fun job in some ways i bet it's super fun to kind of read through and catch up on what people are doing and then kind of see some of the playfulness that people have like i can imagine every now and then you get one that's more like one of those bad national park reviews that you see online where it's like <laughs> just breeze yeah. was too Dusty. windy water yeah. was yeah. too wet <laughs> grand canyon Spiky. big hole in big the ground hole. got in the way yeah. <laughs> I love those. Those are so funny. <laughs> so yeah. I imagine yeah, that's a fun, I mean, that can be a fun aspect. It is fun. And for years, I actually did that job because mm-hmm. we were only five people. And that was one of the things I did. And I honestly really miss that. And I would email the winners and I'd give them their gift codes and I'd help them if their gift codes weren't working. Right. Um, and I, I have to say, I miss having that sort of a close connection with the, the campers that I used to have. Right. And now we have a whole team who does it. You have other people to do that. You get to go camping. Yeah, you get it. to drive around in the dirt van and get and get like waved at and honked at. And all that. You're still a very close connection. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, 
um, new campers and, and just campers in general right now, we're just inundated with this very curated look at what camping is, whether it be Instagram or any other social media. Um, mm. Do you have any wisdom on on how to, to reframe the real trip, the real adventure, the real travel to where even the, the not comfortable nitty gritty dirt moments um, are yeah. actually part of the adventure and the and the take it home with you kind of memories and all that. Do you have any wisdom on how to do that? Because you've, you've done a lot of camping and travel. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, even just with the dirt, we encourage that. That is the whole point. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't want a website or an app where you see these perfectly curated pictures of what this experience is going to be like, because that we all know that is not true. That is not right. accurate. Right. And so like one of our core values is authenticity. Like it needs to be authentic because other than if you, it's not, it's, it's fake. And that's not going to help you figure out where to go camping. Right. If anything, mm -hmm. it's going to hurt you because you're going right. to get there and be like, oh, where's. Where's the harpist that this picture showed right in the corner of Where the, the camera? Where the fairies? I don't see. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this area so in Arizona really said important. it had penguins. I want penguins. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good penguin. Yeah, I mean, anywhere. I'll take a penguin. I love anywhere. a good penguin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, yeah, we don't, you know. And if, if like, you go to a campground and you had a bad experience for whatever reason, that's good to point out, too. I mean, it's not all roses and um it can't be all good reviews that sure. that would defeat the purpose of, of having the review site. That would be boring. <laughs> that would be if very I may, boring. There, whether you're talking about uh, Yelp or Better Business Bureau or maybe even TripAdvisor, there's some mediation needed sometimes between a reviewer, um, someone who has had an experience and a campground owner or something like that. Is there any element of mediation on the dirt? We, we haven't had to deal with anything too crazy yet. Um, okay. We, you know, we have been asked to remove certain things or just have removed Ooh, certain things. It's a slippery slope. Um, <laughs> yeah. That That's were against our terms of use. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we always go back to the terms of use and we're like, this mm -hmm. does not, this breaks this. So. Um, but we we haven't luckily had to deal with that too much. But yeah. campgrounds cannot like reply to your review, right? They can't yet, but that's definitely something that we're building for the future. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's okay. definitely something that's on our roadmap so that uh, campgrounds can easily reply to a re review they get. Uh, you, um, you I've had campgrounds ask dirt, me like. Uh, you, you just don't want the dirt to turn into mudslinging. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that whole question was just to set up Good that joke. joke. You understand that, it right? Was, wasn't it? <laughs> this, is, this is what he does. He just I'm wanted kidding. that joke. Jeez, Clint. Well, it Sorry. was worth it. It was amazing. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I wallow in it. <laughs> oh no, it's never going to end. No, meet Clint. <laughs> it's a challenge working in the room with him every day. Uh, sorry. So you've been camping. I want I want I want some some good stuff. You've been camping your whole life. Yeah. Correct? Tent camping, yeah. then you oh, had yeah. a trailer, yep. now you have a van. I yeah. want to hear your craziest camping story. Like, just, you learned so much because everything went so wrong. Do you have one? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> so many, I don't even. Don't we all? <laughs> I think, yeah. One, um, one thing that I was just telling someone recently is Kevin and I went to, there's a state park in Eastern Oregon that we had been there a few times and it had never been very busy. So I'm like, okay, well, it was Friday night. We didn't get there until 10. We didn't have a reservation. I'm like, I'm sure it'll be fine. And if it's not fine that we can find dispersed camping or another campground, we get there at 10 and we had the cricket and we were so hungry and mad and crabby oh, uh -oh. and we get there and it's pitch dark and it's uh -huh. it's totally full it's so full there's nowhere to go and there I, we look and there's like no dispersed camping anywhere nearby there's no other campgrounds anywhere nearby 
it got really, really ugly. So we, yeah. we did find on the dirt, thankfully, as we started heading back towards Portland, really not a very good spot, like kind of right off the highway, um, where we eventually made it there like at midnight and mm-hmm. I tried to pretend that the night never happened. <laughs> and then you just, you just ate half a loaf of bread and went to bed, right? <laughs> exactly. And you I know what's up funny in the is the parking lot of a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even have that option. I know. Um, Cause that actually works funny, really well for everybody. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is the next day we found a great campground and we spent the day there. And of course, what made my Instagram feed that great campground, that great experience. Right. I didn't bother to mention yeah. the, the crappy right. stuff we had been through to get right. there. So can you find Cracker Barrels on the dirt? I was wondering, do you have people putting in Cracker Barrel reviews? Like we, the roast we don't beef was have amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not yet, but we are adding um, like Walmart and parking lots and we're adding mm-hmm. a new category um, so that there will be pins for campgrounds, like commercial uh-huh. campgrounds, mm-hmm. pins for dispersed sites and pins uh-huh. for um, overnight parking like Cracker Barrel, okay. Walmart. That's really helpful. I mean, the more that you yeah. can put into one app and keep it simple and yeah. user friendly, man, such a big help because yeah. especially since the camping industry is growing mm-hmm. so much so fast with so many newbies, right. it it's impossible to find a campground. I mean, you said you had this problem yeah. in 2013, so I'm sure, I mean, now it's way worse <laughs> yeah or way or way easier because they can find the dirt right way easier because <laughs> of the dirt but without the dirt right, it would right. be a nightmare <laughs> it would be a nightmare an absolute nightmare and and i guess another layer just to pitch out there your team is probably on it if you're looking at uh adding something like overnight you know waypoints to your destination maybe even uh another layer on your maps that allows for pins for dump stations Totally. Ooh. Yes. I know that's on the list. And that definitely yeah. has stemmed from Kevin and I spending six months on the road sure. going to other apps to figure out where the dump yeah. stations were. Uh, where can we dump? Yeah. <laughs> Sandy dumps is yeah. been the one I've always been like, I think that's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That- so, it, last year, since you were out there for the six <laughs> months, what stuck out as the, the, the best places that you were? in those six months of travel? Oh, that's such a good question. We, um, it's hard to pick, but you know, we spent Thanksgiving camping on the outer banks of North Carolina. Mm. Um, and that was so pretty. And you couldn't, you wouldn't believe the, the Thanksgiving meal that I made on one little burner outside the van. That was really fun. Um, Aww. beautiful. I'd never been there before. Oh, what else was really good? Um, we stayed in an RV resort in the Keys, which was probably the most expensive place I've ever stayed. It, but it was so pretty to be right there on the water. Did you have key lime pie while you were there? Clint. Oh, well, I ate a lot. I would. I ate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what camping yeah. is to me, eating. <laughs> yeah, that's the most important part. That's right. You get to eat in yeah, a different way than you usually do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. But exactly. Where, where where are you looking forward to in this next year time frame? Let's say you got another yeah, you got 12 months ahead of you. What, what's What's on your bucket list for this next 12 months? Well, I'm excited to not do a long trip again with my husband okay. and co-founder in the van. Um, Anyone else? I'm Would you really do a long trip with someone else? <laughs> Just <laughs> by yourself? <laughs> yeah, by myself. Don't, don't share um, this episode I'm, with him. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I'll make sure he doesn't see it. Um, I'm just excited to do some like long weekend camping. Or, you know, Oregon, it's amazing. You have yeah. the coast. Oregon you have is the so mountains. pretty. You, it's so pretty and we got the van last summer and then immediately left so we still haven't even just done like a weekend trip around here oh yeah Um, nothing close so i'm just excited to do that okay cool cool now uh i i have only one question left do you have anything before i ask my one question is your question like the ender question? It doesn't have to be. If you cut out all kinds of questions (laughs) this is this is awesome you are so good at this i trust you let's hear your Let's hear you going out okay. question. All right. 
What is the magic of travel and camping to you? Mm. I just, uh, there's nothing better for me than sitting around a campfire at night with, for me, a glass of wine, just looking at the fire with my friends, with my husband, with my dog, just feeling so at peace. Uh, you know, I, I just love that feeling and it always grounds me back to peace or something, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's just such a beautiful thing to experience. And for me, that's what keeps me coming back and back to, to camping. Oh, so cool. Good answer. And she didn't plan it. You, you <laughs> felt, you know, I felt that deep down. It, it was a real answer. <laughs> we did a whole episode a about <laughs> the psychology of camping and why it makes us feel grounded and, mm -hmm. and safe and peaceful. And oh. that's what that reminded me of. So oh, it, it does that for me, too. To that. Yeah, that's great. What does it do for oh. you, Clint? You know, yeah, um, Clint. When I was growing up, I did very little camping. Um, so it, my memories of camping was don't grab that coat hanger that was in the fire. Um, don't go wandering <laughs> don't off. Don't touch the, that cactus. <laughs> don't don't go wandering off in the woods until you find the highway five miles away and get brought back to camp. You know that was my memories. Um, so so not peaceful. <laughs> what are you getting at here? Totally different kind of peace. But 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 with my with my own kids, we're trying to get, do quite a few trips. You know the more local stuff, and so this is um, for me. Um, this is a way to do the whole unplug thing that everyone talks about and to yeah. go, wow, just just wandering around, finding sticks and rocks and, and having the inquisitive minds of the kids going and them just, they just can't stop talking about all the oohs and ahs and, and what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, that does my heart good. And going to travel and camp is what's opening it up. And my kids do more playing outside than than i think they would if we don't i mean we got back from camping ourselves on sunday and they just won't come back inside oh i love now. that so fine did you lock the door saying can they come back inside yeah. Lindsay, your turn about what uh, uh, what the it's peaceful yes the, it, it's peaceful and it's calming I don't have my phone and my computer and 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 my kids are just nicer mm. like they're I've noticed that about mine, too. Yeah. Like it's so much more pleasant to be around them yeah. when we're not in this house full of stuff with homework and cooking dinner. And now there's this and now yeah. it's bath time well, when you're got, camping. It's just yeah. like. No bad. Cool. About, they got Whatever. Four walls and a roof yeah. on them. We cage them all we the time. Uh, yeah, and they're <laughs> yeah. so much more pleasant to be around, and that is totally worth it for me. And then just for me, not kids included, it is that like I don't. Yeah, you you have nothing else to do. The feeling that you yeah. have nothing else to do mm -hmm. but sit there yeah. and stare at a fire, yeah. and you're and not plan worried about meal. anything else. And yeah. yeah, figuring out where to go next. Logging onto the door yeah, yeah. and then logging off because yeah. you're unplugged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always say, you know, our goal is to use technology to help you get somewhere, but then not use it. Yes. You know, once yeah. you're unplugged. I mean, technology is there. We should absolutely use it to help us not use it. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't exactly. make any sense. Are you going to cut did, that out? You did great. No, I'm going <laughs> to raise the volume on it and add sound effects. Cool. <laughs> Sarah, this has been really, really fun. Do you ever make it down to Texas? I, it's hot down here, admittedly. You know, when we drove through, we stopped at Marfa, Texas, when we yes. drove through yeah. on the way back from our road trip. And that was mm -hmm. really interesting. But other than that, no, but I've always wanted to go to Austin. Well, that's where we are. So, well, so look at that. I will. In the next 12 months, we'll have you on live in studio. <laughs> that would be really fun. That would be fun. Sign me Absolutely. up. Absolutely. You should come down for our rallies too. We do big rallies with a bunch of campers and man, it would be cool to have the dirt there. 
We'll send you the that information. That would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds perfect. Sounds perfect. Oh, man. So, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. This has been really cool, really fun. I've learned a lot, and and I'm definitely going to go pro level, like, immediately. Right. Me too. And, and check oh, this I'm out. I'm a pro now. So. And yeah. if anybody else well, wants thanks. to check it out, in case we weren't clear, it's an app you download on your phone called The Dirt, D-Y-R-T. Which is the only right way to spell it. I mean, well, I'm not yeah. officially changing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's and it's actually T H E D Y R T. Yes, the, the dirt. dirt, correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we also have a website, so it's a website or an app. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're if you just even look up camping in either app store, we're we're usually the top ranked app, so we're pretty easy to find. Found to be. Yeah, you are. Ooh, 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 I have one more question. <laughs> I have one more question. I almost got out. And, oh, but wait, wait. What? Are you international yet? Oh yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But we uh, we really want to get it down in the U.S. first. But for okay. sure, we when we plan to expand. So in five years, if you camp anywhere in the world, you know the dirt. You got this. Amazing. You got this. Yeah. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, this is this has been worth it. I, I'm I'm stoked about getting this uh, this interview out there so that other people can, he- awesome. can hear and know about what you're doing. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun to, to talk with both of you. Clint, do you feel like you got enough dirt? I did. I got the skinny and the dirt. The the, the dirty skinny. That's, that <laughs> sounds dirty. It sounds like a a good drink. It, it kind of does. Skinny it, dirty. Yeah, but but what would, would the base of that be? be? Uh, olive juice. Olive juice. <laughs> <laughs> olive juice. You too. <laughs> well, why so salty? <laughs> oh, but for real, we got to stop making dirt jokes. Um, no, no, we don't. Okay, I'm signing up. Absolute. I'm sold. Yes, absolutely. And I think that uh, I think just being a part of a community that operates the way that the dirt lends itself to um, it's it's going to only be good for, for my travels, maybe good for your travels. I'm less concerned about yours, more about mine. But um, I know rude, right? Rude. Yeah. Sling and mud again. Well, I think my problem is I know the three spots that I go that are near me. I bet there's more that I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think maybe I could I, spread my wings a little I bit. Have my driveway. <laughs> I have Cedar Breaks. Yes. And Jim Hogg, which is this basically the same saying, park. <laughs> Jim Hogg is the same park on the other side of the lake. I know. So the dirt is going to help me expand my horizons to say, Mm-hmm. Taylor. Yeah. Giddens, do it. Maybe. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. And then write reviews and be a contributor. Yes. And earn rewards. Yes. I like it. I like it. All right, everybody. We can't thank Sarah enough. Now, we really mean it. That was a fantastic interview and we had a delightful time. We really hope we can get her down here in person to Austin, Texas at some point. But until then, don't forget the website that is rvsmalltalk.com. Don't forget the group on Facebook, RV Small Talk Community. Don't forget our YouTube channel, RV Small Talk Podcast. And don't forget Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah. Rate and review. It really helps us get the podcast out to other people so they can hear about the dirt as well. Uh, rate and review on Apple Podcasts if that is where you're listening from. Okay. With that, This has been the RV Small Talk Podcast. I'm Clint, that's Lindsay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and we'll catch you next time. Bye.